Okay, bread and butter pickles. I didn't know much about this till Abby made them. You're gonna have to watch a whole show in order to get that. I'm gonna do a little stair climbing today to show you how that's done. Dr. Margaret Christensen is here. She says a whole lot of health problems are linked to mold. Do you think? Fortunately, she's on Know the Cause. And then one of my favorites, Dr. Fred Pescatori from New York City is here to talk about glutathione. How do you get glutathione if glutathione pills don't become glutathione in your body? And I open today's show with this question. How do you kill fungus? People have been asking me that. Do I need a prescription for my doctor? Are there supplements? Do tell, Doug. Away we go. Know the Cause is brought to you today by Remarkable Revolutionary Reg Active. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. So many times I answer questions on Facebook or YouTube when they come in. I do these three hours a week of live shows, but sometimes I don't get to them. It's not they're not important, folks, just we're getting hundreds and thousands of them coming in. Uh, two of my Facebook buddies asked this question, Angie and Maga. How do I get rid of fungus? What kills it? Folks, understand, first and foremost, most of you watching this show right now, if you want to know if you've got a fungal problem, starve it. If it's a deep mycosis and it's created a lump inside your body and that lump is being caused, uh, called anything other than a mycetoma, a fungal lump, then I might get very, very serious about both killing it and starving it. Let's talk today in the next five minutes about a couple of ways to get rid of it. There are prescription drugs. Let's go there first. Prescription antifungal drugs stops or kill fungus. Um, depending upon the uh, concentration used, antifungal drugs like nystatin, Spornox, Diflucan, you hear me talk about these, are both fungostatic, that means it stops or inhibits the growth, and fungicidal, that means it kills it. So you can tell your doctor, I'm going to start on Kaufman's diet, and I would like Spornox, Diflucan, nystatin, etc. Uh, your doctor knows your health history, I don't. Sometimes these bloodstream antifungals can be hepatotoxic. So they can be toxic to the liver, you have to be careful, okay? He or she will know. Um, let's say he says, no, I don't want to put you on antifungals, I don't have a problem with you following the diet. Then your question, and here's the answer, some antifungal drugs, these are natural. Psyllium fiber binds fungal mycotoxins in the gut and encourages regularity, two good things. Probiotic good bacteria has antifungal properties. Fatty acids like fish oils, linoleic acid, essential oils, caprylic acid, cod liver oil, etc., all provide antifungal properties. And then finally, plants have something called phenolic compounds. Phenols in plants provide antifungal properties to those plants, and then we benefit when we eat the plant. You see how this goes? <clears throat> so by changing your diet and eating more plant food, uh, by going on omega-3 fatty acids or lauric acid, MCT oils, coconut, etc., um, <clears throat> you could tell your doctor, look, I understand you're worried about my liver, uh, but can I try two or three things, you know, oregano oil, etc., and I'll rotate those every week or two um, in lieu of the prescriptive medication. So, uh, he or she might say, okay, that's not going to hurt. Follow along the diet. What is the diet? Well, I'm going to go off grains. I'm going to cut my carbs way down. Uh, there are still plenty of carbs on the Kaufman diet, believe me. Uh, but it's a safe diet. People, some of you have been on this for 10 years or longer. Uh, so it's a safe diet. Okay, the next graphic says all living organisms must eat to survive. We are living organisms, but so are fungi. With food, organisms thrive but without food, <clears throat> they ultimately die. To defeat fungus, you gotta starve it. And like I said in the opening, many of you will do great with just that. Fungi eat carbs, bread, cereals, pasta, dairy, alcohol, potatoes, beans, you know, applesauce, prunes, raisins, grapes, bananas, etc. So <clears throat> the higher the glycemic index or the more sugar a food has in it, 
the more fungus thrives on it. I mean, this is something that fungus love. And folks, you don't, you can't help it. How do I know if I have a fungal problem? How do I know if my arthritis is fungus? Are you craving chocolate, sugar? Do you eat cereal and pasta every day, rice? Are you feeding the fungus? Fungus has a way of pushing your cells to the side and saying, we need to eat first. To heck with you, we don't care if you die we're going to feed ourselves first. And you find yourself craving alcohol and sugars and all these you know, carbohydrate-rich foods, you're feeding the fungus. In fact, that's what's going on. Uh, finally, this, <clears throat> when suspecting fungus as the cause of your health problems, always consider both killing it and starving it. I have done probably you know, 2,000 hours of these segments, and the one thing that holds true is this depending on how old you are, how strong your immune system is, and your diet, many of you will find you can just starve this stuff. In two weeks, you'll feel so much better just going on the Kaufman cleanse, you know, the Kaufman One Diet. Try it for a couple of weeks. It'll give you plenty of protein, carbohydrates, fats, etc. It's a great and safe diet. Some of you will need antifungal drugs. Some of you will need antifungal supplements, okay? You gotta find your thumbprint when you're all about killing fungus. Within a few weeks, you should feel much, much better just changing your diet. That's your sign. Diet is my deal. Okay, joining me right now is a dear friend of all of ours that know the cause and all of yours at home, Dr. Fred Pescatori. I guess they've seen you on TV with us for 10 years or, or oh, longer. Oh, easily, yeah. And when you're not here, we've come to New York and filmed with you and that was a ball. Just that trip was a ball. We want to talk about probiotics, right? Uh, uh, both uh, Dr. Pescatori and we here at Know the Cause love Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. You're not going to pry me off of that one. But I want to talk about a different kind of bacteria. Sure. And this was brand new to me a couple of years ago. If there's one antioxidant, you think of vitamin C, you think of all these wonderful antioxidants. If there's one we all need with an aging liver, it's something called glutathione. Problem is, it's difficult to get. So Dr. Pescatori is going to educate us a little bit on that. And, and it comes in a bacteria in a package called vitality and immunity. Man, who doesn't need more of that, right? So take it away there, Dr. Pescatori. Well, what's, what's the interesting thing that ties all of those products together um, is the ME3, is the, is the lactobacillus fermentum ME3. That is the probiotic that works specifically on glutathione levels. And glutathione is, is a potent master antioxidant in our bodies. We need glutathione to keep our liver working properly. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is the largest, fastest growing syndrome in the United States. And that's because people eat poorly, they're overweight, diabetic, that sort of thing. So all this fat just gets stored in the liver. And when you have fat stored in the liver, the liver can't really do what it's supposed to do, which is to detoxify our bodies. So when people say they're fatigued, they're exhausted, they don't get enough sleep, they can't wake up in the morning, they're not feeling well, they're not, they can't exercise. Well, your liver's bogged down. What do you expect? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not clearing out the toxins that we ingest, we come in contact with all the time. And that's where ME3 comes along because ME3 is the first in, and from what I know, the only thing that can actually help the body synthesize, produce, and recycle glutathione. And we need glutathione because as we age, our bodies produce less and less of it. And it is the most important antioxidant because everything gets processed through our liver. How do we get this short of this product, RegActive? How do people get glutathione? I'm not even sure I know. Well, the only way I could ever give people glutathione and actually see their levels raise was by giving them intravenous glutathione. So I'm a doctor, so right. I can do that. <laughs> but for other people, I mean, and it's expensive. It wasn't cheap for these right. for people to get intravenous glutathione. So now I can watch their l levels raise just by giving them ME3, which I love. I love to be able to watch it go up. There used to be something called, not used to be, there still is, N-acetylcysteine. Yes. Because N-acetylcysteine is the precursor to glutathione. But I was never convinced, and I never saw levels actually go up when you used N-acetylcysteine. Mm. And the other thing is there's so many different uh, glutathione products coming out on the market now, liposomal, sublingual, all of that. I'm still not convinced that I can watch glutathione levels go up because I know ME3, I see clinically 
glutathione levels go up because I can measure it. Now, you're not saying, because I've been at your business, you're not saying stop, the doctor here is probiotics. Oh, you're saying not at do all. us a favor. Those serve a purpose, right? But what about this back here? You know, what about my liver? What do I do about that? You're saying pump that up too. We have to. I mean, so it's not. So it's not. They're not. Ex they're individual products. Right. Doctor Hare's probiotics works on the gut and to heal that, and this works specifically on the glutathione uh, pathways in the body, and that's what we really need. I was talking to Doctor Pelton the other day, and he said, "Look, I throw down two or three of Doctor Hare's in the morning, two or three of these before I go to bed in the evening, and I feel like a million bucks full time." I wanted to tell you just quickly. I read an article not long ago. When glutathione levels go like that, insomnia goes like this. Mm. So people are up all night wondering, what's it's got to be my liver. I'm waking up at 3 in the morning. Folks, we can fix these things. I, I will not say don't go to a doctor and get everything checked out, but we have something. We have, finally, fuel for our liver that we never had before. It's interesting how the same company that brought us, Dr. O'Hare, is living probiotic, the, the prebiotic, the postbiotic, and the probiotic itself is now bringing us another strain of bacteria that helps with the liver. It's getting interesting, isn't uh, it? Better and better every day. Your patients are so lucky. Uh, Dr. Pescatori is in New York City. He's been a friend of Know the Cause for many years. You get treated differently in his office than I've seen in other doctor's offices. You, are, you have blessed patients, you really do. Thank you. Do consider this, Dr. O'Hara's plus Reg Active every day. Watch in a couple of months. Thank you, Dr. Pescatori. Thank you. No more excuses. You're going to exercise. You have a second story in your home, use the stairs. Then after that, Dr. Margaret Christensen is going to teach us what every physician should know. Mold is almost everything. Watch this. Your doctor has told you to walk. God bless him. Walking as we age is so good for us, folks. They say that better than calcium for your bones is walking, is exercising. So you're pushing 60, 65, 70, and you want to speed that up a little bit. Do you speed up your walk? You can do that, right? Or you can try this. I simply call this climbing the stairs, then turning around, and going back down the stairs. And you do this a few times, and that heart rate is gonna go up. And you're gonna sleep like a baby, and you're gonna realize that along with all the problems in life comes exercise. That you're not picking up the kids anymore, right? You're not taking them to school and driving home and trying to exercise and eat well. This is a different time in our lives for many of us. But you must keep the exercise up. I'll never forget my college test, anatomy and physiology, a one-year course. The last question, we all circulated tables, what's this muscle, what's this joint, etc. The professor said, what have you learned during this year about the musculoskeletal system in the human body? Two words only. You know what it was? It moves. And the older we get, the more important it becomes that you do the same thing. If that's all the exercise you're getting, but you're following the Kaufman diet, you need to think this through. A little bit of exercise every day, good supplements, good diet. Watch how you sleep, watch your mood, how it improves, and just watch yourself get better and better and feel better and better. My friends, I have a guest for you today. I was her guest a short time ago on the ToxicMoldProject.com. Uh, Toxic Mold Project. Yeah. By the way, huge success. It was Congratulations a huge success. Thank on you. that. She is a medical doctor. Margaret Christensen is her name, and I'll let her. Uh, I'll let her tell you all about the what she's involved in now. But basically, folks, what you want to do? She's an OBGYN for many years. And then her family began to get sick around her. She got sick herself and realized, wow, there's a lot that I don't know out there. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Christensen, thank you for coming in. Yeah. Teach people uh, what your organization does and how you first became fascinated with a field we call functional medicine. Well, um, functional medicine looks at whole systems and root causes of mm. uh, why are we sick. I was conventionally trained, and basically you get labels 
for a diet, you have you come in, you're having symptoms, you get a label. With that label goes drug or surgery. Right. So the, the drug it out, cut it out method is kind of what we were taught. And unfortunately, what I figured out after practicing for a while and then after getting sick myself and my family members were sick, something else was wrong. I didn't have a deficiency of an antidepressant. Um, I didn't have a deficiency of you know, some narcotic pain medications. What was going on that was creating this problem? And it took me eight years to figure that out. Uh, but in the meantime, I got into functional medicine. I, I started taking courses. And that's, what, uh, that's how we practice now, looking at the whole big picture. Genetics, toxins, nutrition, stress levels, diet, nutrients, putting all those things together tells us why you're having the symptoms that you're having, and then we can undo them. And our bodies mm. amazingly be able to heal See, themselves. And there's a bunch of doctors who work with you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is, yeah. What, a, what a team yeah. you guys are. Were you one of those doctors? Many physicians I've uh, interviewed mm -hmm. tell me when they saw the I word, yeah. You know, when they saw infection, right. antibiotics. Right. Were you one of those doctors who didn't even consider mold, mildew, fungus? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I had, I had no idea that this was uh, a problem. Yeah, you know, as a gynecologist, I dealt with a lot with yeast infections. And yeah. so, yeah, we'd give maybe some diflucan right. or monostat for, the, for those things. Yep. But uh, the, the connection to diet, to nutrients, et cetera. I took antibiotics for three years as a teen because of acne. And that's what started... My, oh, my own challenges and issues, irritable bowel syndrome and all. Again, I didn't label it any of those things at the, at the time, but now when looking back, I can see that. During this uh, mm -hmm. toxic mold project, I know you interviewed people about toxic home. Yeah. Be, living in a toxic home, how does one know if they're living, and it might be a brand new home, but yeah. how do you know if mold is proliferating through that house? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. Here's the challenge, um, Doug, is that the way that we build our houses now, they're basically made out of sticks and cardboard. Mm -hmm. So these they're fodder for uh, mold growth, and the sheetrock, when it gets wet, that's something that, uh, that uh, really provides the, the growth medium for molds to grow. So... Even if you have a brand new home, the way they're constructed and built, it could be getting wet during construction. They wrap it up in that Tyvek and it is in the wall. So clinically, what do you see then in a patient who walks in? Well, so what we see is that um, oftentimes there'll be multiple family members who don't feel well. Chronic fatigue, headaches, migraines, um, severe anxiety, can't sleep well. The kids might have asthma, allergies, ADD. Somebody's in the family has an autoimmune problem. Uh, and um, a lot of irritability, psychiatric symptoms. Uh, those are the common things that are going on. But a lot of the times you're presenting with a fatigue syndrome, some kind of pain or inflammation syndrome, or some kind of you know, neuropsychiatric spectrum. And in the old days, mm -hmm. you know, decades ago, when you saw a patient mm -hmm. with a psychiatric problem, right. you'd refer to a psychiatrist. Absolutely. Because you didn't know the etiology. And the right. sad thing is neither does the psychiatrist right. today. So, right. folks, what... what uh, Dr. Christensen is doing is, as she begins helping the person via diet or supplements, plant-based supplements, see, she sees a change. Generally, how long does that take? Well, I mean, we can see we can see dramatic changes within three to six weeks, just changing diet and giving some nutrients. If you're in a current situation that's problematic, you have to get out of that or change that somehow. But um, remarkable person, remarkable yeah. work. Um, she hosted the Toxic Mold Project. By the way, you can go to ToxicMoldProject.com, and it was a huge success. Congratulations yeah. <laughs> on you. that. She is also in clinical practice with other partners here. Carpathia Collaborative. Carpathia Collaborative. You see it at the bottom of your screen there, .com. Do study what this doctor is doing. It's different. Most importantly, it's working where others may not be able to help. Thank you for coming You're in welcome. and sharing Thank you. with us. Great education. Thank Now, we're going to go into the kitchen with Abby, and she makes eating pickles fun all over again, like when we were little kids. Bread and butter pickles. Different name, same great taste. Watch this. Hi, I'm Abby, and today we're making Kaufman One style bread and butter pickles. Now for me, I didn't realize how much I missed pickles until I got on the Coffin One diet and realized I can't eat them. So I figured out a way to make them for myself because I really love pickles. So I'm gonna show you how. First things first, we're using English cucumber or pickling cucumbers. I've got English cucumber here. We've got red onion. 
and a mixture of spices, but I'm going to take you through the process. I've already sliced up one English cucumber, and I need a little bit more, so I'm going to go ahead and slice up another one. And you want to slice them pretty thin. You just want to make them nice and thin so they can absorb all the spices. All right. Now we'll put these in our bowl and we'll use those in just a second. Okay. Now, what you're going to do, you're going to take your jar, and you're going to put all the mixing and pickling spices in before at the very bottom. So we've got mustard seed, pickling spices, all that in there. Uh, I believe this is celery seed, and some coarse sea salt. Okay, so that's all nice at the bottom. Now we're going to go ahead and add our veggies. Throw in a bunch of the cucumbers. All right, we've got some cucumbers, now let's put some onions in. And I don't know about you, but I love pickled onions, especially on a salad. And this will give a lot of flavor to the cucumbers, or the pickles, actually. Uh, but you can also use them in other things, the onions themselves. Okay, so that's, that's nice and full. Okay. Now we've got our last little mixture. It's a two to one ratio of apple cider vinegar and stevia. So I've got two cups of apple cider vinegar here and I've got one cup of stevia. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that right now. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pour, actually I need a spoon. I'm gonna get a spoon real quick. I'll be right back. I'm back, okay. Now we're just gonna go ahead and mix this up so it's nice and even. Okay, that looks good. Now we're going to go ahead and pour it just to where it gets over everything. Okay, and if you have a little bit left over, it's okay. Just wanted to make sure I had enough to cover everything. Go ahead and put the top on. Make sure it's nice and tight, and then we'll give it a little bit of shake. Get all the spices, mix it around, everything like that. Okay, and now this whole process takes about seven days. So you want to make sure you shake it up twice a day for every day for seven days. And at the end of the week, you've got a nice full jar of bread and butter pickles and pickled onions. Okay, it's been a full week and I'm really ready to try these bread and butter pickles. Let's see what we got. Oh, oh. Oh yeah, it was so good. This will go great in any kind of salad you're making, hamburgers, anything you want. Delicious pickles. And again, you can get this recipe at knowthecause.com. It's all Kaufman One, it's antifungal, everything that's good for you. They're easy to make, easy to do. Have a great day. Wow, you know, one of my favorite segments in any show we do is anything with Dr. Fred Pescatori in it. Here he's talking about RegActive, creating glutathione in your body. How important is that? So you get the double benefit, right? You got the probiotic that makes the glutathione. Thank you also, Dr. Margaret Christensen. Folks, it may take me another 50 years, I'll be really old then, to teach every doctor that mold should be discussed with every patient. Thank you for joining us today. What'd you think of those pickles? I'm gonna go eat some right now. God bless you, bye-bye. I had no idea that this was a problem. Yeah, you know, as a gynecologist, I dealt with a lot with yeast infections, and so yeah, we'd give maybe some Diflucan right. or Monistat for the, for those things. Yep. But the, the connection to diet, to nutrients, etc. I took antibiotics for three years as a teen because of acne, and that's what started Pre my own challenges and issues: irritable bowel syndrome, and all. Again, I didn't label it any of those things at the, at the time, but now when looking back, I can see that.